video is going to walk through the process of uh, growing mycelium in coffee grounds. So the first two thing I'm going to do is sanitize my hands and the tools that I'm working with using some 91% isopropyl alcohol. If you want to be even cleaner, you can wear um, gloves, like nitrile gloves. You can also, you should also wear a mask. So I'm spraying down the surface, I'm spraying down the knife that I'm going to use, and preparing everything to work. I also cleaned down the whole surface before I set up. So I'm going to use king oyster mushrooms. Um, these are probably the best variety to do this with because they grow very quickly. Um, there might be better, but from my experience, this is the one that works best for me. So we're basically going to trim the trim the sort of main shaft of the mushroom, and I'm basically going to cut a bunch of little pieces. Each piece is going to be about a quarter of an inch. Three, four millimeters thick and about three eighths to a half inch around. Um, so that's what three three centimeters or so. And you know they don't have to be circles. Obviously, I'm just carving little chunks off here. Um, I don't even think it's necessary to use a very sharp knife. So I'm going to cut a bunch of pieces here. Um, and when I'm ready, I'm going to prepare the second part of this, which is basically the substrate that we're going to use. And we're going to use ground coffee here. Um, so ground cof coffee grounds are good because they have been sanitized by simply the act of making coffee, running highly heated water through the coffee grounds, so that's basically killing anything that's in there. Then I'm sanitizing the spoon and sanitizing the jar that I'm going to put this in. I'm getting out the extra alcohol that's inside the jar. It would eventually evaporate, but you know. Um, the coffee grounds should not be super wet, nor they should, should they be super hot, so, but they can be sort of, they should be moist because the moisture is important. Um, and once you lay down a layer, you just basically drop little pieces of the mushroom in around the edges. Just distribute them out. The better you distribute them, the better sort of a growth you're going to get in terms of they're all going to meet, meet up with each other. And then you just keep basically layering this up. Add, add a couple centimeters of coffee grounds, then add a few more pieces of mushroom. Um, when I've prepared this material in the, the coffee grounds in the past, I have a metal strainer. So I basically make the coffee, let it cool down with the lid on so that nothing could get in, then clean my hands with alcohol, um, do a little press with the back of my hand to push the extra water out so that I just basically have just moist grounds. And then once they've cooled down sufficiently, you can go through this process. You don't want them sitting around for too long, otherwise they'll tend to collect more material, right? So you want to be careful about that. Um, in addition to coffee grounds, I've also used tea, loose tea in the past, which works quite well, and I've also used um, craft paper, which I've basically boiled for about a half an hour, and that's really just to kill anything that's embedded within the craft paper, since it's usually sort of um, garbage paper, like from a from a grocery bag or something like that. I've also heard that uh, corrugated cardboard works quite well because of all the nooks and crannies. It holds moisture really well. Um, I'm just adding a few more pieces here to basically just take advantage of the little bit of extra coffee that I have. I don't want to waste it. And the coffee, the coffee is basically the food for the mycelium to, to build from. So it basically decomposes the coffee and uses that to build the, the, the hyphae, or the sort of little threads that make up the mycelium body. So now that I have that, um, I'm going to add a couple more little pieces. 
And then the last step is to basically cover the top of the jar. And you can see I have a co coffee filter here, which I'm going to prepare with some alcohol. You can also use any sort of uh, breathable fabric. You don't want the holes to be too wide because we're trying to keep basically like spores and other sort of contaminants out. So I'm just ripping the coffee filter in half, spraying it with alcohol to make sure that anything that's on it is killed. Um, then I'm going to lay this over the top and seal it with the, the canning lid. If you don't have a canning lid, you can use a rubber band. If you don't, and um, I've also used uh, saran wrap with holes poked in it, which actually works quite well. So just store this in a shoebox with a glass of water in it, keep it out of the light, um, and let the thing breathe. The key is to store it in a warm, moist, dark place.